What up, though? Welcome to the off season. I'm your boy OG Tim Wilson, and I am here, of course, with the Nasty Boys, Waze and Rob for five, and we are here to let you know some of the news that's going on around the league and during the off season. Just like, like we said, just the off season. So I had some music and stuff queued up, and I did. I had to get rid of all that shit. It shut it shut the show down last time we tried it. So we just we just gonna go dry. So Ways, what's happening with you, man? Man, not much at all. Uh my daughter's sick, so she over there at grandma's house while uh Kim and I go ahead and get to work here. Uh today, tomorrow. Well that's cool. That's cool. Big Ed, what's up with you, man? I hope the daughter feels well, by the way. Hope she gets well soon. Uh Big Ed, what's going on? I mean, uh we're for five, what's going on with you, man? He froze. Not much, just chilling. Just chilling, chilling. He still freezes up like Big Ed, so. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Got too much going on on my internet right now. Is that what it is? What yeah. What's going on on your internet, man? Well, Junior's got his Xbox. Jamarion's got his uh, his PS5. And my wife's watching Hulu. Okay. All while we're trying to do the show. I'm a big fan of Hulu right now. Yeah, me too. I love Hulu. Hulu's got some good stuff. Hulu's that Hulu's that deal. I like it. Yeah, Hulu's got good stuff. So uh uh anyway, that said, man, uh let's get on with the get on here and uh go go talk about some stuff that's going on out here in the uh in the sports world. Uh, I know it's a little off off base, but I'm going to mention it just real quick because I just want to have an NBA moment, even though I know Waze is not an NBA fan. and I don't know, Rob, you're probably not much of an NBA fan either. A um, little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, but a couple of things have been – a couple of things of significance have been happening. One, um, nobody seems to be able to beat Boston lately. Boston went to Golden State and beat them by 50. It was up by 50 in the first half. Um, then they went. Oh, I froze play, up. <laughs> they played Milwaukee and beat them by about 50. I mean, they, <laughs> they've been beating. They ain't been slouches. They've been beating the good teams, the teams they're supposed to be scared of. They've been dropping, been beating them, dropping like 146, 150, 160 on them. I'm like, dude. Video Boston. game scores. Boston is balling right now. Yeah. Boston is definitely making a making a push to say this is the year for this is our year. So I'm curious to see how this gonna play out. Um, but the other thing that happened this week. Uh, also that happened this week in basket in the NBA of significance is LeBron James has reached 40,000 points. He has scored 40,000 career points. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite an achievement. And, and I mean, he was already the, the he had already passed Jabbar for the all time uh, leading scorer. So that milestone had been already um, taken care of, but now he's hit the big 40 K. So that's a huge accomplishment, um, for, for LeBron James. So big ups to LeBron. Big ups to LeBron and I, all, the, all the LeBron haters out there. Get over it. What'd you say? What'd you say, Rob? Uh, I was going to ask you, who do you think is the surprise most surprised? Surprising team in the NBA right now. The surprise, most surprising team in the NBA right now. It's a tough call, A, because I have not been watching much NBA, but I do listen to a lot of sports talk. So I know uh, I, for me, other than the fact that Boston is dropping uh, crazy number, all star, all star game numbers on people, I think New York. Uh, has really been the team that I didn't see coming that's really balling out right now. They, they really play good ball. What about you? The team I didn't see coming. 
the Timberwolves. Yeah, Minnesota, okay. Minnesota. I kind of saw them coming though. Okay. I kind of saw them coming though, but I get it. I get it. I understand. Yeah, because um, I was. I'm a big fan of Anthony Edwards. I, I just thought. I just thought he was. First time I saw him, I was blown away. I was. I had no idea. I didn't know. I didn't know. But that was last season when I saw him, and I was like, bro, this dude is. This dude is the truth. What the hell is Big Ed doing? He just walked out. <laughs> that was weird as hell. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Sorry, I had to plug my computer in. He just walked down some steps. He do 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 do. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. No, <laughs> for me, the Wolves. I I will say, OG, and you're right. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but over the years that we have discussed basketball at any period of time, I digest that information. And over the last few years, the Wolves have been slowly creeping into the playoffs. Or into the playoff picture. So I could see this, but as a former, I'm not going to say former, as a kid who grew up as a Wolves fan because he grew up in Minnesota, I am kind of shocked that they're actually doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I get that. Uh, And I, I guess I'm shocked that the Pistons are as bad as they are. Uh, but uh, other than that, they got screwed in the draft. They had the worst, their worst record in basketball and got the fifth pick. How is that, man? They, they got screwed. And, you know, basketball has changed. It's not about trying to find that jewel in the second round. It's if you're not in the top three, you're probably going to miss. It's hit, if, after the top three, yeah. you, you're basically. And see, that's where the Wolves lucked out. They had two number ones. Yeah, if you if you're in the top if you're not in the top three, you're pretty much in the second round because it's hit or miss after after the top three, and they had yeah. they had the worst record in basketball, but but because of this lottery bullshit, they ended up with the fifth pick overall, which I I, I will say the lottery has has been fixed from day one, and I stick to that. I, the, the NBA the NBA lottery has been always fixed. It was started because. Patrick Ewing was going to go to a small market. I forgot what team it was, but there was a small market that was about to get Patrick Ewing out of college. And he was the biggest name to come out of college since the birds and magics. He was, it was, they, they needed Patrick Ewing to go to a big market. And so they said, it's no longer going to the team with the worst record. It's going to, we, we're going to do a lottery. And they started the lottery for Patrick Ewing. And guess who got the first overall pick? New York. And that's where Patrick Ewing the is. Knicks. And Patrick Ewing went to New York and uh, got in the big market. And that was the beginning of that was the beginning of this lottery. And it's just been so fixed all, all this time. And I just it's like every year. Oh, so LeBron just so happened to go to Cleveland. Really? Okay. Right. Yeah. Wimbiana coming out. Oh, that's the biggest name. Detroit got the worst record in basketball. Is they going to get Wimby? No, let's send him down there with Popovich in San Antonio. Uh, the team's been known for um, the international players. Big man. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it's been uh, – it, it's 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 a trip. They got screwed. Um, they got a couple of good pieces, uh, but – Pistons are trash right now. I hate to say that. I hate to say it, but they are trash. And uh I don't I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They got they got the second worst record in basketball right now. Mm. So yeah. maybe they'll get maybe they'll get a top three pick next Who's year. Who's got the worst? Uh somebody just somebody just got worse than them. I forgot who it was. It may be San Antonio, to be honest. But one team, they got one team just, I mean, it just happened. They just passed somebody up like two days ago, and I forgot what team it was. But I think it's San, it may be San Antonio. But don't quote me. But they, yeah, they, somebody just passed. They just passed them up, like yesterday or day before. But anyway. 
Uh, as I said, I have not been paying close attention to NBA this year. I, okay. I don't know why it's not been not been in my heart this year. Um, I'm, I'm kind of worn out on some of the BS. Quite frankly, you know what I you know what I've been more excited about more than than the NBA. It's, Women's basketball in college, NCAA women's basketball. Man, let me tell you, Caitlin Clark is the truth, and Angel Reese is a baller, and she she just just attitude that is that is fun to watch, and it's just some when you watch them, they just ball. It ain't a bunch of complaining, it ain't a bunch of crying, it ain't a bunch of flopping. It is ball on top of and it's 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 interesting that because in their game they're in no rush to go pro because they're actually making more money in college yeah. not that the nil is in place so these players are making more money in yeah. college than they're going to make in the pros angel reese is not getting a million dollar contract when she goes to the WNBA, but she's making like 1.7 now right so that's the whole, that's the big difference. So these players are staying and this making this college game for women's basketball extremely entertaining and intriguing. Yeah, Caitlin Clark has been balling out. Man, this is crazy to see. It's crazy. And there's a girl coming out of high school that right now, that's a, that's a beast too, so. Uh, give it, it ain't going away. The women's game has changed. The women's game has really changed. They is really stepping their game up, and the three point shot has really revolutionized it a lot because them chicks can hit the three. Yeah, <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> Caitlin, the Caitlin to uh, needed what two points to to tie to to break to take break the record or to tie the record. So here's the shot uh, to tie the record. One. Well, here was, but well, she's got the record. So, yeah. but anyway, yeah. she was, she just needed one to make one shot for the record. And she knew it. So what did she do? She take two steps across half court and just light and just fire up a long one from the logo. <laughs> fire up a three from the logo, just for a fact. Bam! Bottom. That's what I'm talking about. Entertainment. Yeah, I got it, and it was entertaining. I made sure of that. So that was that was priceless to me. That was priceless. Uh, so I, I was. Did she break the record on a? Did she break the record on a free throw though? No, she broke the uh, record on a three pointer from the logo. Yeah, on a three pointer from the logo, and she she intentionally did it. She said it. She said, "You know, I had to do it from the logo when they asked her about when they asked her about it." She said, "You know, I had to hit it from the logo." She hit it from the logo. Bam! And it was bottoms too. It was nasty. Damn. It was nasty. And uh, there was another Never record did. that doesn't go recognized uh, because it was before the NCAA recognized women's basketball. It was, I think, AITW was. Uh, the league name, and there was a there was a, 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 another person who had that record. Well, Caitlin broke that one too. So, uh, so now she's legitimately the record holder for the big, the, the highest score in women's basketball history in college. So, congratulations to Caitlin on that, and she's going pro. She's declared for the for the WNBA draft. Yep. So she said she's out of there. And that is definitely. Good for business. Absolutely, absolutely. And, yes. and she she beat P, uh, Pistol Pete. What do you mean, Pistol Pete um, Mar Marinovich or whatever his name was? Marovich, Marovich, Marovich. Yeah, she beat his uh uh his record. She's the it's, it's, highest scoring college basketball player ever. Oh, as, as far as overall, out of out of uh, men or women. Oh, yeah. That's a, that okay. That's an accomplishment to me. Yeah, that that is strong. That is strong. Uh, it's it's hard to 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 equate that though because she's not playing against men. So, yeah, right. And he did. So that's a that makes it a little bit of a difference, but it's still a, it's still quite an accomplishment. Still quite a pistol, Pete Maravich. Indeed, indeed. So, okay, so enough about that. 
let's go on to some football, shall we? All right. I can get with that. You can get with that. Russell Wilson has been released by the Denver Broncos. Where does he land? Hmm. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has been the gambling favorite, I would say. So, I mean, that seems to be where everybody thinks he's going to end up. Pittsburgh. I have three spots, and I will say I can probably put them in order one to three. Okay, that's good. Top, Let me get it. My top spot that I could see him going, needing him the absolute most, is New England. Ooh. Interesting. The next spot could be the Falcons, which is a little more talked about. Okay. But number three is the potential for the Vikings. Really? I don't like it. I don't want it. But it is a I could see him coming to the Vikings. Really? It's a potential. Like I said, I don't like it and I don't want it. But it's an idea that is out there. So what's interesting to me though is that out of your top three, you didn't name Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh seems to be the first name on everybody's lips. Yep. I think Pittsburgh wants to go young. They have they kind of have to at this point. I think Pittsburgh's rebuilding. You've been rebuilding for what feels like a decade. I think Pittsburgh gonna pick him up. I think Pittsburgh might pick him up to mentor Kenny Pickett. That's the reason why I say Vikings at three. I think the Vikings would take him for about a year and draft a rookie. My guess is we make a move somehow. I'm guessing probably draft capital over the next couple of years so we can move up and get Drake May. Hmm. Put Drake May behind Russell Wilson for a year. No, nah, May's going to, to the Patriots. Unless Russell's there. And that's who we trade up for and with. Patriots hmm. need a quarterback. They're not moving off their number three spot. Unless they're moving to number one to, to get Caleb Williams. I don't like the idea of Caleb. He's starting to earn my respect, but I don't like the idea of Caleb. Ever. We'll get back to that. I don't like that. Mentioned- I don't know. Something about him and his dad. Some, something about him and his dad rubbed me the, the, the same way LeVar Ball and, and Melo, uh, uh, not Melo, uh, Lorenzo Ball was okay let's we'll, we'll get back to that right now i want to move on to uh you mentioned the vikings uh i do want to move on to that topic the vikings uh quarterback situation are they re-signing kirk cousins are they drafting what are that what will the vikings do i will say when it comes to kirk cousins it's all going to be come down to kirk cousins you can take the pay cut stay with the vikings Keep Justin Jefferson. Or he has to go. And he chooses to find his options more likely in Atlanta or maybe even New England there as well. Or San Francisco. They've shown interest in Cousins. Yeah. Yeah. That was Shanahan's boy. He knows there's a market. He knows there's a market out there for him outside of the Vikings. The Vikings want him, but he has to take the pay cut. And it's because we want Justin Jefferson more than we want him. He wants two years for $90 million. Cousins was a Shanahan pick, so Shanahan is definitely interested. Yeah. I think Kirk goes to Atlanta. I can see that. I, I see the dark horse being New England to pick up Kirk, which, to be honest, I think is a good fit for him. He's used to being under that kind of pressure and handling it. That's what he's been dealing with with the Vikings the entire time he's been here. He's never had good protection. Mm. So, but I I see Atlanta as the best option for him. Okay. All right. All right. Interesting. Before we go uh, 
any further into that, I do want to uh, switch gears real quick, and then we'll come back because I did mention a team that I want to mention again. Uh, but <laughs> why are they going so hard on my boy, man? The internet is 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 you pathetic. Y'all are ruthless, and they don't stop. So Shannon Sharp had an event that he had to sign a uh, small graph for it because he's the marketing sl- uh, sleeve for Laporte, uh, his his cognac. And so we'll do an, an event at this this, uh, this wine, food, liquor and wine store. And they recorded him getting out of his, his Escalade and he made a little statement, we're going to get busy and go and went into the, went into the store. Well, somebody went and found video Somebody took the video and freeze framed it in two shots that made Shannon look a whole lot more Shay Shay than Shannon. (laughs) Man, why they do my boy like that? Leave Uncle alone. (laughs) They trying to hurt his rep. See, Cat said they coming. (laughs) Yeah, Cat did say they was coming. (laughs) <laughs> they come with their big numbers and they come in hard. Man, <laughs> that's crazy. I and saw- his outfit didn't help. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you couldn't wear something at least a little more baggy. <laughs> None of his outfits help. At least a little more relaxed fit. You know, something, but yeah, no, they did it all wrong. They did it all wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see that I, one yet. You didn't see what? Uh, the outfit he was wearing. I I didn't see that clip yet. Oh no! How did you not see that, man? I don't know. Oh my goodness gracious, alive! It is so bad, bro. It is. <sighs> I wish I was on my mini cam. I'll go ahead and pull it up for you real quick. Is it up on the what up? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's in the what up social page. Sports. Uh, now there's one thing to see the whole okay. video, you can miss it. Yeah, but somebody, because somebody, well, actually, once you've seen the memes, once you, it's not really memes. Once you've seen the freeze frames, when you watch the video, you see it. You see, right. you see where they got it from when you watch the video, and, and you know it's largely because he moves a little different with as he's getting out the vehicle because of his hips. You know his hip surgeries, right? His bad hips. But then also, right before he talks, he throws his hands up like that, and then he like like he was thinking, and then he then he says something. Well, they got him in here. <laughs> it's a really bad look. It's a really bad look. <laughs> and when he was getting out the truck, because he had to shift in a certain way, he boom, and they got him right here. Mm. And it was, it looks very, very bad. It's not a good look. Oh, yeah, so one of those sports pages, it's there. Uh, I don't know if the video is there, but the freeze frames are definitely there. I tried to find the video and put it on there because I want it to be seen. I want you to see the video so you know what they did to do it. But boy, it's been running rampant. I want to hear his reaction to that on Nightcap. He is not going to respond to it. Uh, Chad Ochocinco said something out there, and he's because he, he's trying to encourage uh, Shannon to talk back. We got it. We can't let people get away with it. But Shannon said after the Mike Epps thing that he's no longer going to respond to any of that stuff. He said he was he's been advised that the best way to deal with it when people come at you just ignore it and keep going. They're only coming at you for clickbait. And when he responds, he's just giving them more, more shine. So he's he's been advised to, to ignore it all, and that's what he's gonna do. And Chad's like, no man, you can't do that. Fuck that. Deep, 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 deep. Yeah, but uh, I so I don't expect him to. Oh, he even got a man purse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's just a bad look altogether. In the shoes with the, the shoes with the. the <laughs> it's just the bad. Oh man. Not a good look. <laughs> not a good look. The outfit did not help the pictures at all, man. No. Oh, man, you got to get the woo wear. 
<laughs> with yeah, the out, the outfits didn't help. The outfit did, didn't help, but man, those free frames are brutal. Brutal. Yeah, somebody did a sketch of, of it, it's, of, of one of them too, and it's hilarious. Uh, it's just hilarious. They killing my boy Shannon, man. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, they killing him. Yeah, that told him. They coming. They coming. <laughs> they coming. But you know what? He said when he got that cat check, it was real heavy, so he ain't, ain't mad. <laughs> right. He's like, oh, envelope was so damn heavy. I was like, oh, look, oh, he smoked. It's a big old heavy envelope here. So uh, he's truly been successful with his new venture. Uh, I've, I've read that um, uh, Skip's um, show Undisputed had uh, over the week 65,000 views, viewers, and Shannon with First Take has been averaging 486,000 viewers. And if you look at Club Shay Shay, they're averaging they're averaging one to three million views, and Nightcap is doing one to three million. Got over a million uh, subscribers, so he's uh, he's definitely doing okay. Man. Running Shannon away was a mistake for Skip, and so that's and and, and uh, you know he's doing all right. Didn't make the man mad at all. He just inspired. That's it, man. Sugar don't go on rich. That's all I'm saying right there, big ass. <laughs> uh, so yes, anyway, back to football. Um, I mentioned the 49ers. They've been, other than the Kirk Cousins interest, they've been really, really quiet. Frisco has not been making any noise whatsoever. You know who's been making some noise? It's the NFC North. The NFC North has been getting shaken up. Um, Green Bay has been quiet, but we already talked about Minnesota. And Detroit has not really been out there looking for free agents, but they've been making moves as far as making decisions on on their, th- they got decisions to make on their team with their roster. I'm on Ross St. Brown. They want to get him signed now. Mm-hmm. They want to extend him now. Don't wait till. Don't give him a chance to be a free agent. Sign him now. Lock him down. Um, Jared Goff the same. Yeah. Uh, it appears and it seems, even though the players are saying it's not really up to me, but uh, we'll see. But it seems that the, both players are willing to take sizable contracts that are still team friendly so that they can try to keep this team together. Mm. That's scary. So Jared Goff's doing the Tom Brady thing. And I'm on right. It's like it's like the whole team is on board. It's like they are all starting to be on board with this. Uh so Jared is up for, you know, fifty million, but he's looking that they're looking at him potentially signing between forty and forty five. That's still good money. Yeah, it is. Forty forty two million dollars a year is not a is not a a, a, a small contract. Uh, but it would be team friendly, right? It would it would be something it would leave room. I'm on Ross St. Brown could probably they're not neither of them are coming in saying, I want to be the highest paid in my position. Mm. Right, right. So you get Amon Ross St. Brown for twenty five to twenty eight. That's going to be a team friendly deal where you still have room to make moves and make sure that you get to keep Hutch when his time comes, and you know other guys when they time comes, and keep this team. They're just trying to. They are really trying to keep this team together because they want to do this. They want to do this, and if they are if they are successful in getting that done. Vote well for the future for Detroit. I will, uh, I will repeat myself the same. Sounds scary because 
that that Lions team, they went out there this last season. We all expected them to have a good season. And they succeeded in giving us exactly what we expected. They exceeded my expectations. Exactly. And then they went into these playoffs and they did their thing. Yeah, you know, yeah they got eliminated, whatever. But what was it? They they did exactly as they were expected to come out there and do uh, from their coach. And the only thing they were missing as far as a team that could have propelled them into the Super Bowl potentially winning was the one thing that if that entire team stays together this year, we'll have, and that's experience together. I agree. I agree. And and, and Brad Holmes said and his defense. Hmm. What'd you say? What'd you say, bro? I said that in a defensive backfield. Defensive backfield, uh, to defense. But this Brad Holmes said his 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 philosophy and his his strategy going into the draft is not like what everybody thinks. Everybody looks at it and says, "Oh, you've got to fill holes here, got to fill holes there." He said, "That's not how I look at it. I don't look at, oh, I got to get a defensive back, so and, you know I'm gonna, I'm going to pass up on the, the the guy that's next on my list to try to fill a hole." He said, I'm looking to fill depth. I'm looking to fill my depth chart. So if uh, if everybody on my list is on my list and in order for a reason, because these are the best players available that I I want on my team. So when it's my pick, I'm taking the guy at the top of my list. I don't care what position he is. I'm going to get, if I, I may not be improving my defensive backfield, but I may be improving, uh, but I will be improving another part of my team. Yeah. So somewhere, whatever, wherever this guy is picked, he's making that position better. Right. So I am going to get, it, it's still improving my team, no matter what position it is, even if I'm not filling quote unquote holes that people think that my team has. And, and we, we go, we figure it out after that. And so that's what he said his draft strategy is. And that's why he didn't, he didn't balk at picking a running back early and, and picking uh, Laporta when he picked him, you know. So he, he didn't balk at that because that was the next player on my tape, on my list. That was the guy on my list. And and like with Brian Branch, he said, Brian Branch, I had him way early. I didn't expect him to be there second round. You know, <laughs> so I didn't expect him to be on, a, on there. When that pick came, he was way up there on my list and he was still there. Oh, pfft no brainer right rock and roll I don't care what they do. i am kind of curious on what they do with their uh, wide receiver uh room because it's not like they have a room of bad wide receivers but they have a lot of wide receivers but not a clear number two you got a clear number one but then you got a bunch of guys who are basically number two and threes jumbled together playing well so I'm kind of curious if they venture off into this draft and look for a clear number two there. Um, that's a good that's a good observation because uh, that is a crowded room right now. But like you said, it's not crowded with a lot of greatness. Although I do believe they are looking at Jamison Williams as that guy, and he's starting to step up too. And I can see it. I think they're looking at him as the guy. Um, he he is he is that. I think I think they're looking at him as their clear number two. I think he's they they were really expecting him to just take that next leap. Um. And as far as what but, was that name had? Um. What what was the the their third option this year? Uh, Reynolds, Josh Reynolds. Yeah. I think he actually might be able to step up and take up the number two spot next year. I, I can see J Mo doing it though. I think J Mo has been um, J Mo is more explosive. J Mo is more explosive, and he made big play. Whereas in the biggest game of the year, Josh Reynolds choked twice. Oh man! And J Mo made two big plays. J Mo showed up. <laughs> J Mo made two big plays and Josh Reynolds joked twice. And I think that speaks volumes on which one is ready to step into that role. 
I know I can agree. Yeah, I mean it's, but they also got guys. They never even they they never even used much. They got Donovan Peoples Jones. Never, he rarely mm-hmm. touched the field. Yeah. So you know they got him to work into the plan if they want to. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do. They they. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up picking another receiver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise me if they picked him early, but it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up picking one. So. Um, not not sure, not sure which way they're gonna go. But for those that don't know, the draft is going to be here in Detroit next month. So looking forward to it. I had every every intention to be there. I still hope to be well enough to be there, um, just to be there, just to witness, just to be there. Never been to an NFL draft, so I would love to be there, but. Uh, we'll see. I, I gotta play it. I gotta everything. At this point in my life, I've gotta play everything by ear because uh, my health is di- dictating my decisions in a lot of ways. Uh, so that said, how about those bears? Ooh. Ooh. About the them. most talked Ooh. about team in right. the, uh, the off season is the bears. So, uh, yeah. we talked a little bit about Pittsburgh and getting Russell, and we talked a little bit about Caleb Williams, and and we talked a little bit about this. And, and I said, all of that's going to come back. We'll, we, we'll revisit it. What's up, Ben? We revisit it all. But that's because all of these have ties to this Chicago Bear team. And I, I noticed Big Ed was throwing, trying to throw throw Russell Wilson on all the teams that he think Justin Fields might end up in. So I, I caught what he was doing. I caught what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I, I see I see what he did there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, does anybody want to speak? On, on this, on this, uh, or should I go on? All right. Did you guys see the screenshot I sent you earlier? Uh, Devin Hester. No, about the Bears' probable offense this year. Devin Hester saying the offense that he would like to see. Oh, that that Just, was Devin. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Said. That was Devin Hester's dream team. That his his dream scenario of the uh, uh, potential offense this year. Yeah, I did see that. So he saw it. He ain't Man, even... That would be a hell of an offense. He didn't even read it. He just saw it. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I read it. I, it's yeah, just, I, I looked at... Hester. No, I didn't look at who, who it was from. Yeah, it says it's right there. If you didn't read it then. You <laughs> it says it right there. <laughs> I just read the players that, that they thought was going to be on the profitable offense. That was, that was Devin Hester's wish list. <laughs> And man, he said, shit, that's my wish list. He said, if it was me, this is what I would have. What I would do. Um, there's a lot that's a big of offense, talk. though. There's a lot of talk about about this. Um and it's funny how there's so many people that's advising them to not move Justin Fields, but every projection is that they're gonna move Justin Fields. And to me, that would be the worst thing they can do. And the question is, well, where does Justin go? Because right now, you know who the bidding favorite is, who, who's, who so far has put forth the best offer towards getting Justin Fields. Mm. You know who that is? Atlanta. The Pittsburgh Steelers. That was what I <laughs> so far, the Pittsburgh Steelers has put forth the best offer to get Justin Fields. So they're saying we'll take Justin Fields. And if that's the case, well, then where does Russell go? Well, Ways already gave us three scenarios where Russell could go. Big Ed is Googling now. He's, he's trying to Google it because he thinks Atlanta. Atlanta is where a lot of people 
it's wanting to see Justin go because that's his hometown. But Justin is not a free agent. He's not going where he wants to go. He's going where he gets sent. And Chicago is taking the best offer. <laughs> the best offer on the table will be taken. Now, I saw today, just just shortly before we went on air, uh, that another team has thrown their head in the ring to get Justin Fields from Chicago and is very hot on it. That's the Washington Commanders. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that's an interesting landing spot. Um, so I guess my question is, I know we mm-hmm. all, I think we all agree that the best move would be to hold, to, to keep Justin Fields. And, and, but in the, in the scenario that they don't, who do they take with that first pick? Do they go Caleb Williams or do they go Jaden Daniels or do they go elsewhere? Jaden Daniels. Wade, you got something to say? You're just sitting there staring <laughs> off into the fucking wilderness. Before it had been like Drake May or someone else, and I was Jay Daniels. Uh, but I would say if they're smart, based off of what we're all seeing currently, Jaden Daniels is the best option. But this is the Bears we're talking about. Of course they're going to go with Caleb Williams. They better not. They better not. Caleb There's too Williams. many problems. He's throwing up red flags like, wow. Man. He really is. But <laughs> the Bears we're talking about, let's forget the, let's, for, let's not forget the effect of what franchise we are talking about. It's like every day is another red flag. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think the Bears are going to put up, the, the McCaskies are going to put up with him and his dad. Yeah, I wouldn't take him on personally. Either, but. So his father has has evidently been uh, asking about shopping, uh, basically inquiring about loopholes around the rookie uh, rookie draft contract, the rookie pay the rookie contract. How do I get? Oh, how do we? What's the what loopholes do we have to overcome the rookie pay and get get paid more than rookies supposed to get paid? How do we do that? Well, first of all, you don't. Right. Right. Then he's he's also looking for um, options on team ownership. Yeah, and, and the McCaskies ain't finna do that. Well, guess what? They can't do that. The, in, in the NFL doesn't allow it. It's you can't you business. can't play for a team and, and have part ownership. It's against the NFL. Uh, uh, bylaws, so it's, it's not going to happen. It, it's yeah, exactly. It, it's classic uh, conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah, they can't do it. So, um, so that's the yeah. That's his his the, dad yeah. reminds me so much. His dad reminds me so much of Levar Ball. Yeah. 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 So that's that's the dad's out. <laughs> Oh man, we were talking about Boston and Cleveland has come back on Boston. Boston was up by big by big amount uh all game and Cleveland has come back in the fourth quarter with 3 minutes left and tied it up at 99. And Donovan Mitchell is on the bench in street clothes. So they're doing this without their best player. All right, Cleveland. How about that for a surprise? Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, they, uh, now Caleb is always, has also, uh, made an unprecedented move where he is not allowing himself to, to go through, um, you can't, you can't diagnose him. You can't, you can't check his health until after his pro day. Yeah. Until after he gets his Yeah. And he's not allowing his stuff to be released either. It was his previous... His health records. Nope. You can't, you can't look at can't look at my past history and you can't examine me now. Like, does he not understand that when you say this, it says to the people asking, what is he trying to hide? Red flag, red flag. Yeah. yeah. This kid is can we say can we say Jamarcus Russell? 
No, because even Jamarcus Russell was more humble than this. I'm not going to put him in the same category. Jamarcus Russell, yeah, as bad of a quarterback as he was, was at least a pretty damn good human being. Yeah. It is it was being real arrogant. Yeah. Oh, no, that's cool. Then he also made the statement that uh, I don't uh, – I'm going – I don't have a plan B. Plan A is I'm going first overall, and I don't I don't do plan Bs. That's arrogant. Ask Aaron Rodgers how that worked out. Arrogant. So now the latest I've heard is that Jaden Daniels is now on the radar. Yeah, he's been looking spectacular. He is now on the on the Chicago Bears radar, saying maybe we go with him. He's even on the Vikings radar. Well, they don't have the first pick though. But they're no. sure. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Why, exactly. That's why we stopped talking about them two segments ago. But that's okay. I get it. Well, get I'm it. Just, <laughs> just emphasizing that's how how much of an impact Jaden Daniels uh, suddenly had over the last. Uh, he, he, well, he is the the Heisman Trophy winner. He is. But he wasn't not like he, was, not like he was flying under the radar here. No, but he wasn't at least being looked at. But see, the Bears bad track record. The Bears have a bad track record with Heisman Trophy winners. Rashawn Salam. Yeah, but come on. He's gonna say a bad it. track record. Name one guy. Okay, I got you. <laughs> well, that's the only. That's the only one I know that they picked. All right. So <laughs> that, that so. Bad, that's not really. That's not really a track record. It just it just happened once. Uh, <laughs> Early, yeah. I think the Bears should go with Drake May. One is not a pattern, by the way. I think they should go with Drake May, a quarterback that fits their offensive line as it currently is. I think they go with Jaden Daniels. I think I think they I think they move Justin and go with Jaden Daniels. I think that's what they're going to end up doing. Um, not what I would do. Not what I would I would propose. Uh, I would keep Justin Fields and, and move on, but there has been some some players that said the opposite. Said, "Look, you don't make the you don't make that mistake, man. Don't don't make the Danny Dimes mistake. Once he hasn't worked out, he's not working out. I don't know how long you got to wait. To, how many how, how long you got to wait to find out that this is not the guy? But flashes and flashes is not pro- enough productivity." So it, you're showing flashes, but you're still in the top five. Move along, man. Move on. Try somebody new. Let him. Maybe you and him both need someplace else. Y'all both need to change the scenery. What? What if we're all getting this wrong and they keep Justin Fields and still pick a quarterback that first pick? Why would they do that? Why not? I've actually heard that. I've actually heard that scenario. What happens if Justin Fields goes down? Again. Do you want to trust in a potential third string quarterback? Or at least that's his talent's worth to come in? Or let's test this rookie out to see if he could carry the team better than Justin. Uh, I mean... I, okay, okay, I can I can go with it because the only reason I say I can I can see that is because of the rookie contract. I don't have to invest a ton of money in him right now, um, and we can just find out what he is if and when we need to. Yeah. What does that do to Justin though? I mean, if, if I'm the it starting does it does it push him or push him away? I think it actually will push him. I mean, he's already he's already uh, unfollowed him, taking him off of his social media. Uh, how how but, much more confidence does he have to lose? How much more confidence does he feel like this team is losing in him if they even if they keep me, but with the first overall pick instead of getting me a weapon that will help me succeed? They pick, they pick my, they pick my replacement. How? I, I mean, I really. You think that pushes him, or does that push him away? 
Let's think of it not as a Bears fan. Think of it realistically. Yeah. How does that How does that make him feel? Instead of getting up, to, why do you think Aaron Rodgers is gone? Right. Aaron Rodgers got pissed when they picked Jordan Love, and that wasn't with the, that wasn't even first overall pick. He said the same thing. Instead of picking me a re, picking me a receiver, y'all gonna pick my re, my replacement? Okay. Well, Justin Fields ain't gonna feel no different than that. Mm-hmm. That's how you gonna feel. Yeah. And there's another option with <laughs> one overall, and I know we've said no to it before, but thinking of it in a sense of how the, what fits my team best, what works the best for my team, unless you know you can get ex- that extra draft capital, why not just take Marvin Harrison Jr. number one overall? Bingo. It's not like he's uh, not worth the ta- uh, that pick. That, that would be my choice. I mean, there it is. I mean, you, I, I think they should. I would. That would I mean, be my that, choice. That, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. I would just keep the pick. I would just keep. I would stand pat and pick uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. with the first and, overall pick and move. Let's move on. During the rest of the draft, try to piece together a couple uh, new pieces that potentially could work for your offensive line and work on your. Uh, uh, defense a little bit. It, it just keep it simple. One, you just showed Justin. All right, we're investing in you. That's it. You're the guy. Yep. We've decided you're the guy. Yeah. We're investing in you. So come out here, put in that work. You've already shown the world you can run that ball. Now we've given you this little extra protection. We gave you an extra weapon. Show them you could throw this ball. And let's go ahead and get us further than where we have been the last two years. Yep, and that'll be scary. Yeah, that'll be bad. That'll be that not as scary as you know, the Lions keeping every player they currently have next season, but still scary. A good solid number two scary. Yeah, I think I think so. I think that would be the winning scenario for them, but. They are the Bears. They are the Bears. We just gave them the perfect scenario. <laughs> we'll see that where, where they go. Let's see where they go. Actually, perfect perfect scenario though, would be to trade that pick with New England. So we still got number three. Pick up Marvin Harrison with number three. Plus have next year's first round. Maybe another first round after that. You know, in, in 26. Plus a, a third or fourth, that would be the perfect scenario. I don't know. I, I, I like. Here's the thing: is there's too many ifs with that. That's if you can get a good trade with extra pick. By the way, I, I, you you are correct. Uh, if if you can get the right pick with that trade, and if you move down. Does somebody say, well, we see what you did there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take him with pick number two, Marvin Harris Jr. Just, just to yeah, fuck. Yeah, but Washington. Yeah, I know. Washington I... ain't going to do that. Washington needs a quarterback. So? And so, Washington's at two. But I see what you did there. Yeah. I see what you did there. Here's a- so here, 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 I, I got a better idea. Let me pick up the phone. I did there. You want Marvin, you want Marvin Harrison Jr. at number three? Huh? <laughs> do you? Or, or do you want him at number two? Because if you don't, I'm taking him at number two. What, how much is he worth to you? Oh. How much is he worth to you? And I see what you did there. I ain't stupid. I ain't stupid. Yeah, I need a quarterback, but is the receiver really going to hurt my feelings? I tell you what, I need a quarterback. Why don't you send me Justin Fields? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm picking Marvin Harrison Jr. But see, all the talk, Justin, if you were to make that trade, Fields ain't going to get nothing but a, a second or third round pick. No. No, but 
Yeah, all, all the talk, all the talk is he's only drawing like a second or a third round pick. Cleveland Tops. pulled it off, one hundred five, one hundred four. They came back and beat Boston. Oh Have wow! Fun. See, I the reason I don't like the idea of trading that pick is right now we are in a situation where we can create a, a better habitat for our quarterback that has shown us he has life. He's able to do the uh, do what he needs to do. And what better way to show him that than to first overall give him another weapon to work with instead of saying, we're going to go move up to third overall. We're going to give you that weapon, but now we're also going to get our little cut of the pie too. And does New England really want it? Would New England do it? Yeah. Why would New England do it? Why would I give up uh, extra picks to get to move up those two spots? If, if you're gamble. telling me if you're telling me you don't want a quarterback and I'm getting one of my top two one of the top two picks and I might not want the one that Washington getting I'll just wait and do you really think Robert Kraft wants Caleb Williams in the building hell no I'm good I'll just wait yeah we'll what happens they know they got either uh there's more than there's more than three quarterbacks worth picking right now. There's more than three quarterbacks worth picking with my first pick. Yeah. So if I'm at number three, I'm getting one of those top three. Yeah. More than likely one of the top two. They know for you don't move Justin Fields. You're telling me that I'm getting one of the top two. Exactly. I would, why would I? Why would I give up all this draft capital? just to move up to number one and get a guy I'm going to get at number three anyway. Yeah. And if I don't get him at number three, I get do the it. best thing. I wouldn't do it. I say invest in Marvin Harrison Jr. And build off that of wouldn't be a, I, That wouldn't be a bad idea. And it puts, it changes, it changes everything. It makes everybody, it makes everybody start complaining. You can't pick a receiver number one pick overall. You can't do that. You can't pick quarterback. Bip, 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 bip. Just like last year, you can't pick a running back at number six overall. That's that stupid. You pep, 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 pep. When it's all said and done, they shut them all up. In the end, yep. I'm trying to. When it's all said and done, they shut them all up. I pick a quarterback if I need a quarterback. I don't need a quarterback. I pick the. I pick what I need. I pick the best player on the board that fits what I need. When and that comes, happens to be a receiver. When and guess what to, you're gonna do? You're gonna shut up and eat crow. After uh, we go out here and light it, light y'all ass up. When it comes to the draft, it's not about the entertainment. You're just trying to build and get that next piece to get you to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I, it's these notions that it's, it's got to be a quarterback just kills me. But anyway, man, that's enough of that. We're going in circles now, man. <laughs> Big Ed this period on us. You really I don't think, care. Yeah. I don't care what he call himself. He is big head for life. He just disappeared on us. Like he put a big head. So we're gonna wrap it up right then and there, right here and now. There he is. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Rob four five pulling big heads all night. I I can't help it, man. I, I've been we've been doing this for what four years now. I've been saying big head all this time. Four years. So it is what it is, man. Uh, that's it for the off season today, man. I want to thank y'all for joining us. It was a fun show. I hope you what you saw. I hope you got some decent content. And if so, if you like what you saw, make sure you hit the like button. In other words, like what you see, like what you see. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel because we put, we put a lot of content out here for you and, and we really work hard to get, to get it out for you and make our sacrifices to, to make sure that we uh, put decent content on this network for your entertainment purposes. Uh, on behalf of the crew, Big Ed and Ways, I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson, and this is The Off Season. Till next time, peace.